Hi, welcome to this video today. Uh, in this video, we're gonna basically develop almost a little bit of a cheat sheet for when we're talking about rotor parameters. So what I mean by rotor parameters is when we have the, the stator in an induction motor rotating magnetic fields spinning around, it's inducing a lot into that rotor, right? So we know we have relative motion of the magnetic fields of the stator cutting into the conductors of the rotor, which are the rotor bars. Now we're inducing a lot of stuff because of that relative motion. So I do have some other videos, which I'll link below that you can check out about that uh, and generating torque and all that. But what I wanna talk today about is something I, we call an easy fix chart. Now this is really useful when we're talking about what happens as I add load or remove load to a motor in terms of what's going on inside the actual rotor of the motor. Um, so we're gonna go through, we're gonna build that chart. Also, you can check out my other video where I go through the actual torque curves of different rotors. So that's gonna look something like this. And I'll put a link to that at the end of this. So that's the actual torque curves. But what we're talking about today is just the stuff that's getting induced into the rotor. So I've got a chart here. What I'm gonna put on this chart is this side is gonna be my rotor values. Okay, and then down here, there's two ways to look at it down here. So we could look at it as speed, the actual speed of my rotor, right? So this is all rotor, everything on here is rotor. So the speed of my rotor. So over here, this would be, you know, matching sync speed. Here would be, you know, maybe no load speed. And here would be, you know, full load speed, right? All of it occurring right down here. And then all the way back over here, this would be, you know, zero RPM or a blocked rotor condition. So that's one way to look at it. At it. The other way you can kind of look at the bottom line is by thinking about slip, right? So slip is a very, very important thing within a rotor. Um, we're gonna talk a lot about slip as we explore different things within a motor and about a motor. But anyways, with slip, here would be 100% slip, right? Slip, of course, being the difference between synchronous speed and the rotor speed. If the rotor is spinning at zero, slip would be 100%. If the rotor was spinning at synchronous speed, which we know is not possible, slip would be 0%. All right, so now I've got my chart. Perfect. So now what I want to do is I want to talk about what's getting induced into the rotor. So my stator is spinning around my rotor. Inside my rotor, I'm going to induce um, a lot of things. So there's a lot of things that are, and we talk about this in proportion to slip. So there's things that are proportional to slip. So as slip goes down, all of these things will go down. And these things are the voltage inside the rotor, the impedance inside the rotor, the frequency of the rotor, the current of the rotor, and the reactants of the rotor. And that's why we call this the easy fix chart. Easy fix. So all of those things are going down proportionally with slip. As slip goes down, those go down, right? When I have a blocked rotor condition, my all of those are at a maximum because of how much relative motion there is between the magnetic field of the stator and the stationary rotor. As I get faster, there's less relative motion, so I get less induction of all those things. Now, there's something that's always constant inside a rotor. It will never change. And what's constant inside a rotor is our resistance of a rotor. Once the res rotor is built, that resistance will never change. So the resistance is considered constant. And then the other thing, there's something that's inversely proportional to slip, uh, which would be Maybe you guessed it, but that's actually the power factor inside the rotor, right? So the power factor being the relationship between the resistance of the rotor and the reactance of the rotor or the inductive reactance. Um, so that's just kind of a quick chart, you know, when I think about, you know, adding load or removing load from a rotor. Well, if I add load, right, if I start putting more and more boxes on a conveyor belt, I'm going to move this way, right? As I remove load, I'm gonna move this way, right? Think about that. If I'm, 
You know, if I add load, I'm going to move shift this way on the chart. Add load. All right, so, you know, maybe I'm running at a no load speed over here. I start to add a little bit of load. My speed is going to slow down. My slip is going to increase. While my power factor is decreasing and all of my induced values are increasing. The induced current in the rotor is going to end up generating stronger magnetic fields in the rotor, which ends up producing more torque, which usually will help that rotor or motor keep the same, a similar speed, right? So you don't have too much speed regulation there. Uh, and then as I remove load, of course, remove load, I end up moving that way on the chart. All right, so this chart again, just a super helpful chart to get a basic overview of all of those different rotor parameters, uh, things that are happening inside the rotor. A couple things we're not talking about here is the torque curves, like I mentioned. I've got another video for that, and that's going to directly align with the active current in the rotor. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.